Good evening, I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Natural Resource Board for the City of Sebastian. Uh, to begin with, if um, we would like to have the Pledge of Allegiance, if all would rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Stromberg, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Good evening, NRB. Um, George Millar? Here. Gail Gordian? Here. Andrea Ring? Here. Rose Glaser? Here. Jack Lampiasi? Bob Pergolsky? Here. Jim Clifton? Here. Kirthy Wurgoda? Yep. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, any agenda modifications at this time? Anybody would like to bring anything forward to change the order of the agenda or modify the agenda in any way? Mr. Watanabe, I remember we talked about possibly a guest speaker coming in that might need to come in earlier or speak earlier. Uh, I apologize. Uh, we couldn't get a hold of anyone from these agencies, okay. so no, no speaker tonight from the agencies. Okay, being no modifications, um, let's go back to the next order of business is the approval of the min minutes. Uh, do I hear a second? You have a second. Any discussion? That being said, uh, all, all uh, wanting approval of the minutes, please say aye. 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 Thank you, any dissenting, say nay. That's uh, unanimous. Unfinished business, oyster restoration project, status of the permits with the Army Corps of Engineer. Uh, Bob, do you have any updates? Um, <coughs> I, I'll defer to uh, Mr. Wantanabe and, and uh, Ms. Stromberg, uh, Michelle uh, on this. Um, I did provide them with, a, I met with both of them we, uh, a couple weeks ago. I provided the Word document for the narrative. Uh, Michelle has provided some great maps and cross sections to go with that. And so at this point, I have to ask, I, I don't know, has it, has it been submitted back to the core? I didn't, I, unfortunately, I haven't looked at the all the information. I apologize, I haven't looked at all the information yet. Uh, for our last me meeting and discussion, the issue was to have the board review it. Okay. And once the board reviews and right. approves it, then we'll submit the final. And this, this is really just comes to an RAI that was, that was sent to us. Uh, so that's what we're waiting on. Okay, um, so okay. That, that's the answer. I had the, I, I wasn't sure if we were gonna, if you were gonna uh, look at it and approve it uh, as uh, a chair or we're gonna have the whole board. So well, I think Frank it, answered, my que answered your question then. I, I believe we really need the input of the whole board okay. to go over it. Um, I, I'm per pretty sure we've answered everything. I just briefly looked at it earlier. Um, didn't have time to go through it in much detail, but um, Let's see, what page are we on with that? Uh, Sorry. Ch Chair, uh, maybe just a highlight. Uh, in the meeting we had with uh, Bob regarding the review of, and he did a good job providing all the uh, uh, questions, and, I mean, responses to the questions from our last meeting. And then we finished it up by creating the uh, the detailed maps and the information that was missing on the maps as well as the cross sections that, we, that they asked for. Right. Uh, in that same time period, I, I've had emails with uh, uh, his name is uh, Jeff Beal from Fish and Wildlife. Right. Uh, again, his email to us stating that you know his preference is uh, before I we talked about doing a uh, demo project with some bags and mats. I suggested maybe a 50-50. We talked about that. Right. His email back to me was he says no more than uh, one two rows of mats, and he prefers the rest of it being bags. Uh, in the same email, responding back to him from the Florida Aquatic Preserves. Uh, a guy named Matthews or something stated the same thing. He, he concurred with uh, Jeff Beal's uh, recommendation to only do one or two rows of mats. The rest should all be bags. Okay. And, and, they, and best as I could, I, I modified the response in this RAI to that fact. And I know we, we met the other day mm -hmm. about that, and it seems like everything is in order. Are we ready to submit back? At this point, 
Um, Mr. Watanabe, are we ready to submit back to this point with the I, I, I think you're right. I think board. the board, if the board's happy and, and gone through, I, I believe you need to really be comfortable Look, I mean, we did what we have to, but this is really your response. Right. Is This is your project, so I would hope to make sure you guys are comfortable with the uh, responses that Bob actually helped us create. Uh, we took care of some of the logistics, the, the maps, and the, and the cross sections, uh, and then identify them with fish and wildlife that they really want. Uh, in terms of the criteria, but I think you need to make sure that this is what you want to respond back as a request for additional information. And if you guys are okay, we'll submit it back to uh, the permitting agency. And, and this is Army Corps. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and Ms. Oh. No, uh, Mr. Chair, I, and just a second to what, what Frank said, I, we, both of us contacted uh, Jeff Beal from the FWC and asked him to come, and he said no, he just, it was too busy. He said he thought, you know, we're on the right track, and uh, as Frank said, he did send us back both a extensive email with said, I'll, you know, I prefer that you only have one or two rows, um, so I'm just seconding what, what Frank said. I, he, Jeff basically sent the same thing both to, to Frank and myself after our inquiry, and I tried to call Jeff on the phone, um, but he said there's really no need to even talk on the phone because, you know, his message was an email, and uh, so, at that at this point he said you know he, he would just recommend we proceed and at some point in the future he may be able to come but we both we both tried and he wasn't available okay uh, if we can everybody just turn just kind of glance through yes Jim I, I have one question um, I did a little web browsing on using the bag and all the sites I found they were talking about long linear shoreline kind of stabilization things <coughs> we've got a little squares that we're seeking permit to, to put things in. Have, have they provided any input on how they'd like to see the bags utilized? Uh, uh, the, the last email he responded back to me was he was going to get some information from one of his, uh, they're currently working on a project, uh, the email he said they're, they're doing one in St. Lucie County, a new one that's using some sort of a cotton bag. He gave me a name of the company. He says that he's going to have that person send us some detailed information on the type and how to place it. But from what I could tell, it's not, that what you're talking about are restoration bags. The, the oyster bags were originally used to do shoreline restoration. They've converted those now to what we're doing now is to try to re, repopulate the, the oyster back into these areas. And so I think the implementation will be easier with the bags than to use the mat. That's, this is the best I'm trying to get an understanding. I'm not an expert, but that's what I'm understanding from all the emails and documents and research in the web as much as you have done, uh, but the original intent of the oyster bag was to do shoreline restoration. They moved beyond that now to do oyster, I, I call it, you know, trying to replenish the oysters back in these brackish waterways, and they thought that the bags would be a lot easier in, for volunteers and for organizations than the mats. It seemed like the mats were having issues, just implementation and then keeping them where they're at. Yeah. Uh, and that's the that's best that I got so far from the agency. I'm just curious about what yeah. c the configuration should be for the bags. I think the configure from what I could tell, the configuration is what we come up with, best as I could tell. I mean, when when you're doing it, because we're not doing shoreline restoration, so if right. you're doing shoreline restoration, you want to do linear, because you're, you're trying to mimic the shoreline and trying to preserve a shoreline. But when you're not doing a shoreline restoration, you're just trying to implement an area, trying to re replenish it, hopefully at one time there was oysters there, and trying to create a new bed of oysters, is whatever configuration we want to put in. I, I'm assuming a square or a triangle would be the easiest way for us to do it. I, I mean, you can make it, I don't, I don't know whatever shape I think you really want it, but I think the practical sense would be try to make it square or, or rectangular. It makes it easier to implement. Right. And, and Mr. Chair, if you, if you indulge me just a minute. So I'll just read you very quickly what Jeff said so everybody has, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Okay. <coughs> it says, as we discussed, it was both to, my, both to Frank and myself. I recommend that you use primarily bags, and if mats are used, they should be used sparingly, one to two rows and directly adjacent to the shoreward to the placed bags. Exposed mats should not be used. Um, it says exposed mats not associated with bags should not be used. In this manner, your trial demonstration will allow you to test recruitment. Over time, if the mats do not succeed by recruitment, um, then they should be removed. And he, as uh, Frank said, he said, I also spoke with Matthew Anderson from the FDEP Aquatic Preserve and he told me he spoke to your board in March. I don't think I can add anything else to his presentation as he knows a great deal more about oysters than I do. And I'm interested in hearing about the fate of the pro project. So okay. he's encouraging us to move forward, and but 
use bag <laughs> in Excellent. conjunction with that. Mr. Chair, Bill, as, yes. as I mentioned, uh, maybe we can have Matthew come down. I've been con in contact with Matthew Anderson, and he's willing to come up hopefully for November and speak to us not only about and the application can, process, but how they have already done their match, and he's willing to show us uh, the bags. And so in other words, you process. also had bags made before as a test. Right. I bet, and that was like a burlap type of bag, if I remember right, or mesh. It was a bag that was only in the water for about five weeks maximum, and then I sent Matthew the photographs, and he said there was some valuable spat on it. Okay, excellent. Um, if we can go to the question portion here on the oyster mats, uh, it says page one. It appears that all of the inquiries have been um, addressed. We have uh, here associated also the attached bats, uh, the ma maps, excuse me, that um, staff has so excellently done, uh, locating everything with the GPS coordinates, um, also with the various businesses around. So we are definitely in the zone of Sebastian. Then we also have the cross section where it says Captain Butchers. And this is the final cross section, I believe. This is what we were talking about that you and Michelle have made. Can you check your mic, please? I'm sorry. Oh, that's we, took, okay. we took the maps that had the area of views and we just took a cross section, a typical cross, cross section, and, <laughs> and then do the best we can with the information we got with the measurements and basically take it off the edge of the road and shout out to the end, edge, edge of the wood of the lagoon where the maps would be possibly placed. And based on the information that we received um, past regarding depth and information, we just compile it all onto a, onto a Right. Section. I mean, it looks, it looks excellent. I mean, it looks great. So I think that would, and it's got for both sites. Captain Butcher site and also Squid Lips uh, sites. Um, it, it's my recommendation at this time. Um, well, I don't know if it's my, um, Bob, would you like to bring a recommendation um, to approval and proceed with the permit? Um, yes, this is for the Army Corps. Um, requ request for additional information in the response. I move that board accept the information as presented and request that uh, Mr. Wantanabe forward that um, as the city engineer, He's, he would be the appropriate person to forward it to the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, I do have one point of discussion though, if, okay. if, if you'll indulge me. Yes. I, I, I honestly don't know, how are the, are the bags actually anchored or is, is there an anchor necessary for the bags? I, I this is not, Maybe out of order for the what what you asked. I, I they, they may need to oh, be. Oh, let's. We have the motion. Let's get a second, and then we'll discuss. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. We have a second. Okay. Any discussion? You wanted to know about the anchoring of the bags. Yeah, I think um, uh, Frank and Michelle modified the narrative that I had to include discussion of bags. Is great. Um, they, I think it's all um, there and, and as complete as possible. My only my only question, and it is because I, I honestly don't know either. I, I don't know if bags, do they normally get anchored or not? Gil, do you have I'm any? I'm not sure. Okay. We'll just have when, to find when, out. Gil, when you did the spat bags the, for the testing. That was weight, the weight alone. The weight alone of the bag. And knowing that there's no drift in current. Okay, but we'll, we'll research we'll research that as far as anchoring. Yeah, and, and it's, it's not necessarily we have to answer tonight. It's just when I went through this again and we had talked about how we anchor the um, mats, and we hadn't mentioned that. I assume, I assume the weight of the bag alone is adequate, so I assume that is the case, but I just ask asking the question open because I honestly don't know. Chair, uh, Chair, just to help you answer, you know, we, we kept the uh, information on the descriptions and all the details on the mats because we have all that knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, on the bags, I believe we still need to be educated, so I kept it very generic on the response that says we'll use the bags. Uh, as required uh, per Fish and Wildlife standards. So I, I use blatant words like that, so that way they know we're gonna follow their requirements. <coughs> as long as we, we follow their requirements, and that's how I wrote it, they should be satisfied. So it's whatever they tell us to do, we just follow it. Right, right exactly. And I agree, I just was wondering if anybody knew if you had to anchor bags, I was just. 
Thank you. But so uh, no further discussion from me, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, based on approval tonight, Mr. Watanabe, um, are we able to proceed with resubmitting the permit to the Army Corps? Uh, at this point, I have no problem submitting this back to Tammy Debu. M my recommendation, Bob, since you're the lead contact with Tammy, I is she still willing to do a field review? I I'm, not, I'm not really sure where that went. I was, I let, I stepped back once, you know, you made contact, and uh, I and I kind of committed to Tammy in my discussion early on that, you know, I, I think it was a good idea to do this field review. Uh, I want to let you guys take the lead. It was, it, it's our commission's project, so I didn't want to get too involved, but I want to provide the technical support as needed. I'm not sure where, where does that stand right now. I will. I can contact her again. I haven't talked to her since uh, it's probably been a month. And at that point, she wasn't available August or the first part of September. But maybe she is available now for a for a field review. So I can. I will contact her and, and see. And um, so I'll, I'll I'll take that on. Uh, and, and then I, I would. Uh, then I'm okay per your directions to. This is just basically a, a response to the RAI. Uh, the permit's still been submitted. It's on hold. Uh, permits usually had 30 days. I mentioned before I called her just basically to put it on hold, which he did. So the moment I send this response to the RRA, I, I think the clock will restart again. Uh, and hopefully we addressed her comments, and so we should be able to be able to move forward. So, so th this is the Army Corps done. Jeff Beal Fish and Wildlife comments were based on St. John's review process. With That's on hold too right now. My suggestion would be to submit the same information here in this document to St. John's River Water Management District and hopefully restart the clock there as well. Okay, I agree. Any further discussion from any members? No? Okay, we have a motion on the, the floor right now to submit um, and a second to resubmit the um, REIs to restart the permitting process and to get the permits approved for the oyster bag project, oyster mat slash bag project. Um, I would like to, um, I believe it would be appropriate to amend the motion um, slightly to also um, submit the information to Fish and Wildlife in addition to um, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Um, is there a second? Uh, Mr. Chair, just po point of order, actually it would be to, uh, and Frank can correct me if I'm wrong, but it would actually be not the Fish and Wildlife Commission. They actually or commented St. John's. on St. John's, right. It would be, okay, be to the St. John's, John's River then. Water Management District, yes. Uh, that is correct. Your motion should be you want to submit the response to the RAI <laughs> of the Army Corps, and, and then right. at the same time you want to send the same response to St. John's, John's. River Water, and the, hopefully that would address both those agencies' review process um, concerns they had and hopefully then restart that review process again. Okay, so we'll amend the motion to include sending the REI responses to St. John's and um, go forward from there and hopefully get approval on everything. And if uh, Tammy Dubu would like to do a field um, site survey, uh, we would more than welcome that also. Right, I will contact her and, and do that. Okay, um, all approved of the motion on the floor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? There being none, it's unanimous. Um, we will proceed and resubmit um, these things. Do we need a signature um, from anybody on the board here or just the engineer, the city engineer? Uh, uh, again, this is just really just a response to the REIs. Once they are accepting the responses and moving forward with the application, there may have to be a modification to the permit application we submitted. That's all been submitted with signed with my signature originally. I, I'm not sure if that permit application we submitted is still valid. That's what I'm saying. They put on hold, but since it's been such a long period, typically when it goes past 30 days, they want you to resubmit. I'm not sure where this is sitting right now. Again, it goes to each of those agencies. If we do resubmit, can we resubmit with the information we have presently in place? Y yes, I did. Yes, you can. I, I think the issue is really when you, the, in the old days, the, the 30 days was to keep things going. Right. Uh, and rarely did they send out REIs, you know. Uh, our issue also with this application would be for St. John's is we were supposed to submit also our uh, reduced waiver. Uh, as a city, 
this project came through the city, City of Sebastian, because of its population and capital per capita, we our fee is only 100 bucks. A typical application to St. John's of a, of a they call it an environmental resource permit is about 500 bucks. We get a reduction because of our size and our cap per capita, so we only pay 100 bucks. I need to submit that to to St. John's to say, you know, we're still the city. We have to, I have to do it every time we do an application that says we only pay 100 bucks, and then the, and then their uh, uh, their headquarters up in Palatka that gives the okay that says we will accept 100 bucks, but that still hasn't been done because this whole project got placed on hold. Do we need to get that restarted at this point then before we submit or request to submit? The whole thing we submit at the same time. Oh, we can do it all the same, that's what we, so hopefully by our November meeting, we may have a response back, do you think? I, I can't, I really can't say because this project, I have, I have no grasp in terms of what the agencies are looking at. Typically I have a better grasp, I don't really know because I don't have a detailed understanding of these this type of project, I really Process. can't say. Okay. All right. Well, we're getting it submitted, and hopefully, we'll get a response by our next meeting, and then we'll move forward from there. Okay. Is our next point of order is the Boy Scout project? And John, is he? I see. I don't see him here, but I see his yeah, dad's here as represented. Oh, okay. That's a good thing. <laughs> Very good. Got a job. Graduated from college. <laughs> <laughs> um, since we were last here, John got a job. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> he is uh, a theater tech with uh, Sebastian River High School. Oh, excellent. So we, yeah, we're very proud of him. So he's working tonight and tomorrow night. So he asked if his mother and I would come. And uh, he did do a uh, workshop on the 19th of September. Uh, I know he had mentioned that uh, to the board. The last time, and he did it at um, uh, a uh, meet the troops in uh, Oklahoma. So, mm, I guess that's all we're waiting right now is to see where we stand with the bags um, and the mats. And um, he has been in touch with Kate Brown up at the zoo. Um, they do have a division um, that was doing a pilot program with the bags. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll probably go up there and see what kind of operation that they have, uh, according to Kate, because uh, she really is only involved with the mats herself. Um, she doesn't know how far along they are or if they've done any pilot work with it. With so, the bags? Yes, with the bags okay. in uh, Brevard, you know, with the zoo. So uh, John and I are definitely going to make an appointment and go up there and, you know, see what their idea is of um, creating and uh, planting them. So right. what they have in mind. And they're a group of biologists, so we'll see what they're, you know, kind of pick their brain, and we'll see where we go from there. Um, so I guess that's all we're waiting for as the permits, and uh, we can move forward right. and see what kind of percentage that we're looking at because it's going to have to alter the project a little bit. But the end result is the same, so. Okay, I know our, our, we, our my discussions with Mr. Watanabe and uh, Michelle. Um, we're going to strive, I think, right around April to be in the water. Hopefully, everything will get approved. Um, you know, somewhere late March, early April, because that's when I understand the seeding time is supposed to ha happen. There so is a hopefully formula we'll be for ready that. by that point. There is a formula for that with the salinity and the water temperature. Um, and they're still working on that. Right. When the optimum and prime, you know, prime times for planting are, and I guess how far um, in between what they consider optimum for spawning, okay, for the spat, mm -hmm. you know, how far in advance that you're better off getting them out there, you know, before it actually occurs. Right. So we'll have all of that data. Um, right from them when we go up there. So. Love to hear, and hopefully by us. next meeting, we'd we'll love to hear about it. Yes, and hopefully John will, won't be working and he'll be here for the next meeting. But that's, uh, that's part of growing up. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. thank you very much for coming. We appreciate the comments. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion regarding the oyster mats this evening? 
There being none, uh, the Champion Tree Program. Mr. Clifton. Uh, in your packet, you have all the correspondence that I gave to uh, Barbara Cook Reese and, and Michelle. I met with them one afternoon, and Barbara put together the, the draft website. And I don't know whether everybody got to look at it already, but it looks like what I was looking for. And I guess we're going to have a, a show, a, a guided tour uh, through the website now. <laughs> so you should be able to see it up on your screen. I'm sorry? I'm just the driver. You've got to talk. <laughs> oh, I've got to talk. Oh, okay. Okay, this uh, first screen is the, uh, the introductory screen. And you'll see there, there are in orange, I guess, uh, we have a number of web links. Uh, the first one uh, takes us to uh, the resolution that basically established the Champion Tree Program in the city of Sebastian. Oh, we're going to look at it. Okay, and that goes through and uh, tells, shows us that. Then you uh, go to the next link, and I tried to let everybody know that would be interested in this program that this is a, a national program and American Forests, that organization has the, what they call their Big Tree uh, program. And every two years, they publish a, a document that lists all the, the biggest of the big trees. Um, so anybody that wants to, again, see that this is part of a, a bigger bigger process. Uh, then there's a, the National Register of Big Trees, the link to that. Uh, and it's very searchable. You can go through and, and search for different states or whatever particular species you want to look at. Or it's a very it's an interesting site. Uh, then we get down to the second paragraph, and that's the Florida Champion Tree Program. Um, and there is again a searchable website on the Florida Champion Tree site and. Did you click that? Not that you necessarily need to. I don't think it wants to go. <laughs> I don't have control and over that And there's website. also, it's interesting, in Florida, there are a lot of trees that are eligible for nomination to the Champion Tree Program, but they're, they're, they're present and they exist in Florida, but they, they don't have any, any uh, nom no trees have been nominated to fill those uh, spots. So again, like say you can you can put in by county. Uh, back when I was got started with this, I put in our county, um, I, and the only one that showed up was the uh, the um, botanical garden it had some champion trees in it. Okay. Eh. It does that frequently on me too. I don't know what, they've got a glitch in their program. Although when I contacted them, they said it worked fine. Yeah. And the next time I tried it, yeah, it worked fine, but the glitch must be back anyhow. Okay, then the, the, below those two paragraphs, there's a uh, uh, several pages that you can go to. The first one is, do you have a champion tree in your yard? And that basically, um, directs people to the, the champion tree inventory, which we'll get to shortly. Um, and then there's a, a nomination form, which is displayed here. Uh, interesting part of this and thing that we might get some interest in is that there's a, in our database, I, I, some databases record the nominator. I thought that's kind of weird at first, but then no. If I know my neighbor has a monster tree or if there's a state park in the city that has a monster tree um, and I nominate it, I should get the recognition for it. So in our database, the last 
column is for the person that nominated that particular tree. But this goes through, uh, tells us the tree location, the genus, the species, if they know that, um, common name, at least we want the common name. Um, whether they want to have any photographs displayed on this website or permission to give the location. Uh, most of the databases I've seen, if people don't want their location listed, they can be anonymous. Um, and then it's basically a hold harmless uh, to let us come on site and uh, do this. They will take this form, print it out, fill it out, then they can either mail it or bring it to City Hall. And the ultimate uh, process will be that at our meetings, we will look at the ones that have been nominated and dole them out to whoever is going to go in and make the measurements. And we'll also take a picture of the tree also. And take take pictures. If they will allow us to take pictures, I'd like to take pictures. Um, the, we'll get to that when we get to the, okay, uh, what else? Um, and I just went through what I just said. Uh -huh. um, and I point out here, too, that, that there are a lot of state, a lot of, a number of species available that do not have champions. So if you've got one of those trees on your property, you could probably be a state champion. Um, and where does that take us? Oh, okay. Then this is the database without state champions and it may or may not work on any given day. So let's go back to the, our list of thingies. Uh, we have a pay, the next page there is how, how Basically what goes into, without getting into a lot of details, uh, into measuring the trees. Uh, we have truck, trunk circumference uh, at four and a half feet, uh, height in feet, and the crown spread diameter in feet. Uh, the crown spread is um, divided by four uh, to add to the, to the other numbers. And a total of those three, three parameters give you the point score for your particular tree. And just, again, without getting into all the details. Then we have a, a in the, uh, the little brochure that comes out for the city, uh, the city clerk made a, had a little blurb in a few, for the summer session uh, for the hardy oak and I didn't even know we had any historical trees in the city. Um, uh, but we do, we've got the hardy oak down at the, the boat ramp on Main Street. And um, we couldn't get the picture. No, okay. Not, oh. It was not of a quality that okay. I'll on get, the website. I'll get a We're picture. gonna I'll, work on getting I'll, a picture I'll work, for I'll it. work on that. Uh, it, is a, it is an interesting tree. Uh, it's been abused over the years when you look at it, but it's healthy, so it's, it's our historical tree. Uh, then we go to the Sebastian Champion Tree Inventory, and this is basically, I stuck a few species that we should pick up relatively quick in there, and you can see what we're planning on capturing, uh, the date, uh, the height, the circumference, the average crown, and then the total points. The tree condition, these are my, these are old trees. Uh, you don't get to be a champion tree without being an old tree. So disease and storms, uh, the big guys fall out every now and then. So we, we want to keep, an, if they're in poor condition, um, like the hardy oak, I'd probably put that one in eh, midland at best condition. Uh, then photo links, and Barbara, I didn't get an answer on whether we can link photos to this. We, we can, can link photos, yes. Okay, great. As the information comes in, we'll revisit the format. If we need to change it to an HTML or a database driven, we'll revisit it at that time. Okay. Beautiful. Right now, it's just a document. Yeah, static. right. Okay, beautiful. Um, and then we've got the owner, the address, and the nominator. And that's going, that's the website that I'm proposing. So I would make a motion to adopt the website as currently configured 
Uh, and as we look at it and work with it, bring any changes we might see to the board for approval. Thank you very much, Mr. Clifton. Uh, we have a motion made by Mr. Clifton to accept the website as it is. And I also want to thank staff for their wonderful work and diligence yes. in uh, performing those things also. Um, is there a second? I'll second that. Second. Uh, any discussion? I would just like to add my, my thank you to Barbara for, for taking the stuff I gave her and turning it into a web page. Not a problem. Thank you. Jim, one question on that. Do you feel on the, on the nomination form, do you feel that there should be a, a time when the nominee can be contacted or what have you? Or should we just simply call and see when they're available? Or should it be added onto the application? There's an email, so I would think with an email, that's probably would be my first point of contact would be an email. That's most convenient. Um, so yep. uh, then that question could be asked. It'll work point. on. Yeah. The gentleman. Uh, you guys, uh, the measurements are asked for, but uh, don't you think it will be useful to have the age of the tree? I probably they won't know. They won't know. Yeah, I mean, at least because sometimes some people have some historical links yeah. to the trees, just as what you saw here at the hardy tree. Yeah. So if we just have a column for the age of the tree, yeah. it may be useful. Yeah, without, do, without doing some... No, not in a major modification, but I wonder if there may be a column. It's probably not yeah. going to... That's going to be difficult data to come up with. I'm wondering if Michelle may have a tool, a, tr a tree boring tool that can estimate age. Oh, no, uh, I just don't. a comment. I, I mean, uh, Barbara just mentioned, you know, I was kind of hidden, you know, I'm a farmer, you know, and you can tell the tree by the rings. The one way is coring it. I, I wouldn't recommend doing it because these are private trees. In yeah. some ways, you, in, in coring the process, you infect the tree or, or right. damage the tree. Damage the tree. I wouldn't exactly. do that. I highly wouldn't. If these are, these are nice, champion trees, we just want to leave them the way they are, uh, and we just take a face value of the age. I, I think one thing possibly we could also do maybe is estimate the age possibly, instead of, um, unless, like, like you mentioned, uh, there might be some family history yeah. that knows about the tree or something of that nature, but if not, you know, we'll just kind of make a guess at it. Okay. Chair. I just wanted to add that we put the order in for the um, laser pointer. Okay. Um, for the, I'm sorry? The laser pointer to oh, measure yes. the trees. Okay. I just want to let you know. So that will be nice. That uh, helps us uh, measure it. Okay. Um, we have a second. Any other discussion regarding the Champion Tree uh, website and forms and proposals? There being none, let's take a vote to accept this uh, wonderful website and get this program underway. Um, we have a second and a motion to accept. Um, all of those in favor, say aye, please. Aye. aye. Any dissenting? It's unanimous again. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Mr. Clifton, for all your work, and Barbara also. Appreciate everything. NBR Banners. Uh, flags and riders on banners and things like that. I know, um, I believe it was Jim was uh, doing that, but he is not able to be here tonight. Jack. Jack, I'm sorry. Um, we do have some examples that staff has um, created in your package. It says the City of Sebastian Natural Resource Board. It has the logo. It says, working with the city to protect our natural resources, which is basically the motto. Uh, Mr. Uh, Watanabe, would you like to? Yeah, Chair, I, I just want to highlight, uh, Barbara also worked on this. She did a fabulous job on this rent, uh, uh, this uh, banner and the rendering. She she actually created this from scratch. So and she, what? She, she created this from scratch. There was no, uh -huh. She didn't cut and paste. She created this on her own. And if you, it's on the screen now, and she did a great job on it. Oh, I agree. It's outstanding. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love the background also and the flow with it. 
Um, is there a motion to accept the banner? And then we can discuss any modifications once the motion's on the floor. Uh, do we have someone to bring a motion to accept the banner? I know Jack would if he was here. I'll bring a motion to accept the banner. Okay, thank you very much. Second. Is there a second? Thank second. you. Uh, now let's discuss it. Is there anything we you think that we should modify with this banner? Any I additions, any subtractions? Yes. I have, um, because I uh, was so involved in Earth Day, I was wondering if we could add little symbols to this, like an Earth Day symbol. And also it has home of Pendleton Island. Can we put that on here also? I mean, I, I know I'm adding stuff to it, but. And like the Champion Chief program, does it have a symbol that we could then put on here? Just a little tree or something? And a little Earth Day? I, Just I, to put things that we're involved in? I had a suggestion regarding that. Oh, okay. uh, maybe I'll bring it up at this time. And I don't know if we can create this. But a lot of times you can have like little riders to hang at the bottom. Uh, yes. Chair, I'm going to have Barbara answer some of these questions. Th there's more to this because of this detailed uh, graphics. I'd like for her to explain some of the do's and don'ts. Okay. Barbara. Okay. The, the couple of questions that I have in regards to this banner is, one, what is your purpose to it? Uh, adding the symbols and, and items like that, it... If we're going to be changing what it's doing all the time, the symbols may not be appropriate. This is supposed to be something that identifies you guys as an entity and not something that you're, the City of Sebastian Natural Resources Board, it, it's more for like the background of your tent at Earth Day and stuff like that. Uh, walking if you decide to do a parade, go in front of the parade to identify yourself. So that being said, is it some, are those symbols something that you would want to be branded there for all eternity? Would you want it on the, say, on the top of your website or something like that? Is it some, something that, it's something that the content needs to be considered at that point uh, with the icon, uh, putting the recycling there? That's a possibility we might be able to fit it in there, but I would I would lean against having the home of the Pelican Island because that's more the catchphrase of the city of Sebastian, not your guy, uh, your catchphrase. Right. So that's something that you need to consider at that point. Barbara, oh. I, I do have one question, um, kind of along the same line of thinking. I completely agree with you as far as putting a permanent symbol. Is there any way like we discussed, like having little, like little rider signs possibly that we can maybe put some eyelets in the <coughs> lower part of the sign, whoever manufactures the sign, put like little eyelets in the bottom of the sign where we can maybe hang little riders, like little signs that emphasize Earth Day or the Giant Chi program, the Oyster Mat program. And with the things that our board may be doing over time and expanse, those items may change, like the oyster mat program may phase out during time, and but we'll be doing something else during that time. The that we can change the riders on that thing and as it hangs down like maybe another six inches or something. The banner is being, uh, has been proposed to have eight grommets, four at the top and four at the bottom, so anything's possible at that point. I've made it, it, it was, created it's going to be created in a heavy duty vinyl outdoor vinyl okay so and it'll have all its grommets so you'll be able to hang it or do whatever you need to do with it is so it adding adding the rioters i don't think would be a problem because the grommets are already be there okay so that would pretty much go along with what you just mentioned here and as our programs change over time <laughs> we could change those riders and incorporate that so what we're currently doing will you know, be easily replaced. Okay. Um, any other, that, that sounds great. Now, is this also going to be able to like where we can put a dowel behind it? I guess it will where we can like You'll be able carry to tie it or whatever. 
tied to it or whatever. Yeah. Great. It is eight foot long as designed right. right now. So it is a fairly long banner on its own. And that's why I made sure that it had the grommets. So you'll be able to tie it to a pole. I don't think, I don't have the ability with the manufacturer that we're going to be using to be able to put a pocket behind it. Right. Uh, no, that's, I mean, that's why eight grommets because you can use can tie wraps. And yeah. You know, put it around a eight foot dowel or 10 foot dowel or something of that nature. Also being eight foot, I know the city is uh, buying us a little tent, which I believe is 10 by 10. And um, we have that it. will easily fit where we can hang it in the back of that. Sure, so. we have it. Oh, we already have it. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> so those are great items. Um, one, one question. Sure. So eight feet long and how? Two and a half feet tall. Two and a half feet tall. So okay. it, it is a sizable banner. Every, that sounds great. Fantastic. That sounds great. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Um, any are we other doing comments? Vista print then? Yes, we are. <laughs> okay. Doing the two and a half feet. That was the yep. giveaway. Any other discussion? I have a question for Barbara. Barbara, are you okay with the position of the pelican? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm the one who put it there. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? There being none, um, we have a motion to approve the banner for the Natural Resource Board as it uh, appears. Uh, we will also be adding riders at the lower end of it for various projects that we're doing over the course of time and changing that as appropriate. Um, we'll use this to display as we walk in a parade so that our community knows about the Natural Resource Board and also at various events like the clam bake and things of that nature, we can hang it in the tent. So I think it will be used frequently and rapidly, I hope. Um, all those approving the banner, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? There being none, it's unanimous once again. Great. Uh, we will go forward and thank you very much, Barbara, and if you can make this happen, we would yes, greatly sir. appreciate it. And thank you to staff also. Okay. Uh, Barbara, I do have one question. Mm -hmm. this way. Is there any way to make these little banners like uh, for like recycling or Earth Day with maybe the little recycling logo? I'm gonna with the check, mats check online and see if I can find eight foot sleeves that might uh, work well for sliding stuff into because we do have access to a, a, a couple plotters here. So anything of any size will be able to plot or if we can get something to protect them while you're using them. Um, what I was thinking possibly maybe is like a plastic sign type of thing or a corrugated, um, you know, a plastic corrugation um, type of rider, you know, like you'd see different real estate signs that have like a little rider on top of the sign that says pool or, you know, something of that nature that we could maybe attach to those eyelets. And that's what I want to check online to see if there's any way that we can protect anything that we do. Uh, we also right. have a sign department here that we might be able to get to create some signs. That something of that nature. So okay, and great. anything's possible at that point. Okay, I'm just saying, I know some of the immediate things where I would be wanting to hang from that would be the Oyster Map Project, the Giant Tree Project, Earth Day, um, those are three um, that we're, you know, we, we're been intently working on or working with, so. If you get the list to Michelle, and we'll come up with an idea of something that we can attach, that we Fantastic. can change out. Thank you, appreciate it, thank no you. Problem. All right. Next is their Earth Day update. Uh, Miss Andrea and any right. Earth Day updates with the application process and Ms. Glazer, Rose and Andrea? I, I sent a copy to Rose and there is one in the um, packet. I don't know if it's the one Rose fixed up or is that the one I sent you? The one I did. It's the one Rose did. So, okay, Rose, Rose took what I, because I had editing in my, and when you send the editing over um, and you try to get it on a phone, it changes everything and it makes it go like two or three pages. 
So I sent it to Rose and uh, Rose fixed it. I also fixed it and sent her another one, but this one is the one Rose did. Yeah. Okay, Rose. So I updated the vendor list the best I could and will continue to add to it. I sent out the save the date email. I'm not sure if it was last Monday or the week before. I had been on vacation for a couple of weeks, beginning of the month. And I already have four vendors that have approved coming back this year, and I have a couple that said no. But I will continue to work on that, and it's still early. Um, I contacted Waste Management so they know the date now, and they have it on their calendar, so they'll be coming from 9 to 12. They don't want to do the booth because they said they'll have their, all their workers over in the park on the recycling. I talked to, I believe, Terry this morning on the chalk art. So I already had the kayaking, the wide tire bike challenge, and the chalk, chalk, chalk art all confirmed. <laughs> so. Well, that sounds that's great. It. Yeah, it's moving along. Also, and like I, I said, I was gone half of the month, so I will work right. better on it next month. Website, do I need to talk with you on updating that, getting something on it, or? Actually, you can, I guess like what we did with Jim, you can meet with Barbara and myself okay. when she has availability and we can go from there. Okay. Also, I would suggest to our members um, and alternates, um, and also anybody in the community that might be watching this broadcast, um, Please, if you're interested in establishing a booth for Earth Day, um, please contact uh, the city um, or check our website. Um, and also, if we can get out applications to the various businesses to have a better presence and uh, um, influence on those areas. You know, I'd, it'd be really nice if we could have it as large as the clam bake sometime. That would be uh, very encouraging. Rose, if you can. Maybe you can give me a couple of those, maybe 25 vendor applications on its own. Or can we or just I copy them? We can out. just copy this, right? Yeah. Copy it from your Or the package. city will print them out for you. Yeah. Copy it from your package and uh, we can go from there. Because we all browse around town, so we can always hand right. them out. Exactly. Okay. The um, other question on, on sure. Earth Day subject, uh, acquiring entertainment. Okay. I'd like to continue in do the, doing that also. I can contact SPD, see if SPD will co can assist us and do another demo with the dogs mm -hmm. and a couple other various organizations. Uh, did you mention about talking with the uh, chief regarding that at last meeting? Uh, I'll, I apologize. I'll make sure I, I talk to the chief. I, I know they're open. Uh, they have their actually event this coming Thursday uh, regarding their police event, but I know they have several units and they'll be happy. I'll talk to the chief and make sure that they're available. But I'm, I'm sure because they have so many units that they, they should be a, it shouldn't be a problem. But I'll talk to her and get you the information by the next meeting. Yeah, I, I know that was quite exciting last year. I enjoyed watching it myself and uh, the way they detect, where the dogs detect and things like that it was really I, I, I nice. I do want to highlight something now as a... Uh, uh, as a, as a uh, person who wants to have a booth, the city of Sebastian, you know, we, and Earth Day does tie into stormwater and does tie into all the uh, natural issues. You know, our, our city is inundated with stormwater and, and drainage concerns and requests right now because of the rainy season. Uh, we want to try to educate more and more of our citizens. So if, if it's possible, and we usually have a booth during Earth Day, we want to keep that booth and, and do some educational components regarding how to maintain your stormwater, how to maintain your swells, how to maintain your ditches. And at the same time, at the same time we want to bring uh, a larger space and we want to bring out our vac truck and we want to do demonstrations for the brand new okay. equipment that we have. We want to bring it out there with some of our guys and show them what we do for stormwater improvements and to kind of highlight our newest tool we have, which the city paid a Excellent. large chunk of money for. We would like to bring it out there and, and display it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I know we've had other vehicles in past years. We've had a school bus out there. We've had a, a garbage truck with both the run on propane and natural gas. And so that is very welcome. And I think it's very integral to the city. So if you could put our, da our name down, the city of Sebastian Public Works, and we'll have our booth and then we'll have our, our, our truck out there. So like two to three spaces? Okay. <laughs> I'd say if we might even have a designated area like over on the south side of the park for like the vehicles like we have last time. 
preferably where it's close to shade so whoever is accompanying the vehicle mm -hmm. won't be just, out in the middle of the Just to highlight sun. again, for this event, we are going to be closing down Harrison Street uh, because of the event. So you, some of these things we can use in parking on the street. Okay, which street are we closing? Uh, I, I believe you guys are requesting to close Harrison. It's only the, usually when we have clan base, we close Harrison Street. Uh, right. and usually for the vendors and stuff. I, I don't mind them closing parts of that because it's easier to have the vendors park. More and more, I'm trying to encourage vendors not to park on the grass. <laughs> Beyond right. the event itself, you know, uh, we're trying to make the grass and the park more enhanced. And I think the vehicles on the grass has been causing some of the issues where you have, we're getting more and more brown spots. If you've noticed, we're losing our grass. Okay. Uh, so I, I, if we do bring our equipments out there, we, we like to park it on the street then. That sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful. Mr. Any Chair, just yes. one question um, regarding Earth Day update and it says website. Will will the vendor application be available on the website? Do, okay, I just want to make sure. I would, if I get a question from somebody I, and I don't have a copy, they can go to the NRB website and that. Yes. that okay, thank it, you very much. In the past, on your website for Earth Day, there has been a very large banner on the front page directing them to the Earth Day information, which is the vendor application any other information that we need to get out to the public, such as a copy of their, our flyer that we put out, a copy of our slide, and other information. So uh, as with the in years past, we'll, we'll have that all available as soon as I get it. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Any more discussion? I think we're going very much in Gil, if you're gonna be looking at the entertainment. Uh, what about like the prizes and um, question answer thing? I know that was kind of a rough spot last year um, we, we discussed like maybe like a trivia type thing, asking questions. I, I want to shy away from the tickets because like I said people come and go all day long. Right. So I'd like it to kind of be real time. If someone is asking trivia questions out there where there's an audience, um, that we can present a prize then and also give credit to the vendors that, um, supply the prizes also at the same time that gives credit to the vendors as well as, so they know who's sponsoring those events. I was going to start a list of the trivia questions. Okay, great. Yeah, maybe talk about the natural, the champion tree program or oyster mats or um, various other things about recycling and environmental type questions. Right. would be great. Okay, any further discussion regarding Earth Day at this point? I think we're still looking at April 23rd. 23rd, yeah. right. Okay, great. All right, that being said, we go on to the next topic, the clam bake. Uh, what are the, the dates for the clam bake? It's November, I know it's coming up quite Six rapidly. Six through eight. On Friday, the vendors are open from 2 to 9. Saturday, it's 10 to 9. And Sunday, the vendors are open from 10 to 4.30. Okay, and we were talking about having a tent there, and I know that um, since we are related to the city, that there's not gonna be any fees or anything for us establishing a tent um, and showing things. Um, Mr. Gill, do you still have a lot of that um, those pamphlets and all that we've used at other events. I have a few. Okay, that would be great if we could have that on the display table. The question is now, we have a lot of time to span that uh, we have, it would be nice to have a member, you know, at least one member of the board there um, staffing the tent at all times. Uh, Chair, could, yes. could we just, uh, I think the issue was we, we talked about placing this on the agenda. I, I think you should want, we should, what you should do is maybe make a motion to do the clan bake week. Uh, oh, Michelle that would, has reserved okay. that space. I, the city I, has already I'm put sorry, a foothold. I'm cart before the horse a little yeah. bit. Um, let me ask that question also. Um, our next meeting will be November 2nd. No, I'm sorry, November uh, 5th, with 3rd, which is an election day. Are we going to be able to meet on that day in this room? I, I need to check, but probably not. And so this will be the meeting you have before your event, <laughs> unless okay. you do a special meeting or the meeting is suggested. Uh, we, could, we could check with the clerk's office if you wanna have a meeting maybe at the end of October in advance of the first Tuesday of the month. 
Uh, but what you could do right now would be to make a motion well, to move yeah, forward. Yeah, let's make a motion. I'd like to make a motion um, that we participate in the clam bake festival. Um, uh, Chair, I apologize. Barbara helped me out because she works for the clerk's office. Uh, we are going to have our meeting here on the 3rd. Oh, we will have our meeting here on the 3rd? Yes, we will. Okay, excellent. We had it last year. Yeah. Um, but in that regard, um, we can also make sure everything's finalized at our next meeting then. But for the clam bake, I would like to make a motion that we participate in the clam bake this year to um, let the city know a little bit more about the Natural Resource Board and to get our um, faces out there. Um, is there a second to that motion? I will second that emotion, uh, That no, motion, and I'd also like to know if we, can, if we can possibly have enough time to make a banner. I'm not a banner, a poster, representing some of our activities in the past couple of years. Uh, I mean, to that's up to that. you. My, my suggestion would be to push that banner you have right now that you just approved, get that thing ready to go. You, you, as Michelle mentioned, you have a brand new tent, a 10 by 10 that's sitting right outside here that's ready to go i think those two components if we get you some additional posters we'll try but time is running short but i think you have your own banner you just approved right now let's hope right. to see if that'll be ready and complete that you can use that banner do you think we'll have that the banner done by that point i believe so and also i wanted to let you know on the tent it has a white backdrop too that's so even better to hang or stuff so we'll get a little bit of sunshade also you know mm -hmm. shielding from the sun also a little bit yeah so that'll be great um yeah and like i said we can get maybe some of those riders just like oyster mats something we can hang down from that banner that would be you know wonderful also you have two large plastic containers of your past uh members uh that's sitting in our our uh, offices here that right. you may want to scroll through that has boxes of brochures some of that's those brochures may be outdated because i know for example the ones that comes out of dep in st john's they have dates and they have phone numbers i believe some of those are outdated you may want to verify if some of those are, are no longer good you know, i can probably those. take those home or i'll we pick them up from the city boxes of them. i'll pick them up from the city and just go through see what's obsolete and then you know that'll make it easy and just dispose them appropriately in addition, uh, what's obsolete yeah in addition and michelle have done this in the past too if you contact these agencies regarding uh i think we still have time if you want additional information and brochures on oyster mats or whatever the agencies will send you crates of it <laughs> literally okay as i did last year for the, <coughs> how i acquired all the other paperwork <coughs> but getting back to that question for the poster if i can get the board's approval on to setting up a photo poster if we can get that together so that's also show and tell for the public they'll see the pictures of our activity and then be able to explain what some of the photographs represent as far as us representing in our jobs on the board yeah i i have um any other input i don't I have no objection to that um type of a poster are you going to create that gill or with pictures yeah, we can maybe perhaps work with barbara on that okay um does staff have time to do that Again, I want to I highly recommend, uh, Barbara works for another department, uh, and we're pushing the limit on using staff. Uh, right, well, that's, I, what I'm I'm, that's why I asked this. the question, if you know. staff has the ability to do that. So, um, I, I think, it, I, I don't want to tie up too much of your time, because I know you have city duties. I mean, I can put it together, it's not a problem. Well, if, I, I tell you what, if you can put it together, I think that would probably be better. If you can put it together and maybe the only thing we need to provide is a printing service. Uh, is what? A printing service, just printing them out. Because as I said, there is access to a plotter and even Michelle and Frank have access to that plotter. So if it's just something that needs to be printed, it'd be a lot easier than me having to lay it out and making sure it's everything. Right, so okay. yeah, okay. Uh, Gil, can you do no the problem. layout and everything? And like I said, even if it might not even need to be copied, we can That's just fine. attach it and hang it from the uh, various thing and have a couple of easels. I know I've got an easel at home. I can bring yeah. it. Go with that. Get it done. Okay, great. So, so Mr. Chair, um, I was I didn't quite get the, the the times. I was looking at my calendar and so on. Do you, do we expect that we would want to uh, have someone at our table during all open hours of the? I, I think it would be. I think it would be. Um, 
you know, imperative that someone, at least one person's there. You know, it would be nice if two people can be there, but I would like to say not to monopolize somebody's entire day, not more than a four hour segment, unless somebody's willing to do more. But I'm thinking the four hour segments um, that we could do. I can make a schedule and uh, because of sunshine laws and things of that nature, I can ask staff to distribute it if I email a schedule. Uh, Chair, I, I be because of the short time you have, you may want to ask them right now, because by the next meeting, you be, you want to know Finalize. who's available, who's not. Uh, Rose just gave you the, the time <laughs> and dates. I, I think you should just pull them right now. Okay. Um, could, could we repeat the times? I'm sorry, I was trying Not a problem. It's November 6th through the 8th, which is a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, November 6th being uh, the first Friday of November. The times are 2 to 9 on Friday, 10 to 9 on Saturday, and 10 to 4.30 on Sunday. So we have a five hour, uh, I'm sorry, a seven hour span on Friday, and our setup time would be what for that event, you think, Rose? I think half an hour, 45 minutes. By the time yeah, you pop up the tent to tables. Typically, they'll give you between a half an hour to an hour. This tent, you could pop it up in five minutes. Okay. I, I'm just wondering as far as getting there and setting up. Um, so, I mean, I could be there easily on that Friday and help with the setup and be there most majority of that time on Friday and probably some on Saturday and some on Sunday. But let's get some definitive times, four-hour sections. Um, is anybody available on Friday that could be there from 2 to 6? Um, is anybody available that would be able to be there to man the tent? I will be there myself. Okay. And I then can, um, 6 to 9. Stay a few hours. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm sorry. I'm available on Friday from I'm looking at my calendar. Six to nine, I could do that. I could also do the six to nine. Okay, um, so I got Bob and Rose. For logistics, do we just leave everything there then? It, yeah, I mean, at the end? At, at the end of each day? Or um, I think we probably should remove that. Uh, Gil, are you available any on I'm Friday? I'm available for three hours on that Saturday. On Saturday? I'm sorry, on Friday, 2 to 9. Three hours I can offer. Okay. At 2 um, o'clock and help you set up. Okay. I just wasn't sure what the normal uh, protocol is, if the, everything has to be taken down each day or not. I don't I don't think the tents have to be taken down. Now, but the, the, the area is patrolled. Uh, I think what you want to do is any uh, brochures, any materials, you put, a, put them away like, an, and like and the a, plastic containers. Plastic you know, container, you clear out yeah. so it doesn't blow off or if you get any rain. Uh, that kind of stuff. Post the board, you push against the back, you know, push the tables back. You can leave the stuff. It's patrolled. You, okay, the issue so is really in terms of wind, weather conditions. You don't want to have things blowing off your tables and getting wet. Right. Uh, and you, you can, can also drop down your tent over your table so it's lowered if you like. Uh, you, yeah, the tent, it's, it's a pop-up, and you push it up, and it, it pops up. And so you could drop it back down one tier, so it's only about, I think, four feet from the ground. It's got the legs. That'll that help stuff. Protect your stuff. Protect the stuff. Okay, great. And you said it is being patrolled, so it's secure. Yes. So yes, that'd is. be great then. So we don't need to remove anything. Are we going to have tables in too in front? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll 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 do the table. I'll get a table or something. I've got. I know I've got a six footer at home. I could bring that opens up. Uh, if anybody else has anything, I would say suggest bring a couple of chairs. Because we had some at Earth Day, and I was just wondering who, what those tables were. I Did think we that get was them from, from the, city. the city? So I think the city's probably going to be utilizing those in other areas. Earth Day, uh, again, excuse me, Chair, Earth Day is, is, is a city event. The Clan Bank is, is a sponsored event. Earth Day is a city event, so when we have a city event like Earth Day, you know, we, we provide all the services in terms of we provide the chairs. We actually provide the manpower if you need it. Uh, it's all through Public Works. Clan Bank is through an association, and I think it's, I forgot who the, uh, uh, who it is this year, but Clan Bake has an organization that handles it all. So we go through the Clan Bake, uh, and so we're kind of like, it's still our park, but you know, we're going through them. 
you need to bring all your uh, materials they'll give it a designated spot and then we work through them so you have to bring your own tables and chairs uh, but we still uh, police it we still clean it up if in the event this needs help you know I'll have guys out there doing clean up and pick up so they'll monitor our table that's the city events and make sure whatever needs to be taken care of if you have something that needs to be taken care of I'll, I'll make sure our city crews are out there I think if we can if we can supply our own material because the city is supplying the tent which we'll have out there um, I have a table that we can I can bring um, and then if we can just bring a couple of chairs or something I might have I might even have some chairs at home you bring over if anybody's got a folding chair they want to bring um, so I've got Jim and George and Gil from two to six or any portion thereof six to nine I have Bob and Rose that takes care of Friday um, what about Saturday I can do 10 <coughs> to um, like 10 to 2 or 10, 10 to, to whenever. 2 would be great okay I can join on Saturday Andrea, 10 to 2, I'm sorry. Saturday. Okay, from what time to what time? Yeah. We have to span from 10 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night. 10 to 2. Um, is it possible maybe doing 2 to 6? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and then we have a slot from... Um, six to nine anybody available on saturday jim <coughs> yeah I, I and like i said i will be coming filling in all during that time i'll be there some on saturday also and, and i assume i mean we'd like to as you said two people but probably one person could do it you know handle it yeah. be that much business but yeah right i mean i'm just saying basically for the it helps with having two yeah. yeah it helps having two but you know if one is there like i said i will be in and out on saturday all day um, also being part of that uh, Sunday I can I can do um, at least start at 10 probably do 10 to 2 on Sunday okay anybody else uh, from like 2 to 4 30 I can do 2 to 4 30 as long as I don't have to clean up I cannot yeah, pick up wait. anything I you know I do have back problems, so I can't pick up anything. <laughs> but I can I can sit at the booth. Can okay. uh, Sunday? Well, that I'll probably be there. Two to four thirty uh, Sunday. Or at least somewhere three to four thirty. I'll you know. Okay. Be there probably also. Will you be there both mornings to help set up the? Yeah, I'll be to there. Pop it up. I'll go there both mornings also. One thing we have come across in the past being at Clam Bake is the lighting. If your tent is not supplied with lights, it does get dark and people do close down well before nine o'clock. Okay. Um, we'll see what we can do as far as, is there any type of electrical hookup or anything or um, that we can have site, access? Where our table, <coughs> depends on where our table is placed. There are hookups. <coughs> there are down. hookups. Uh, they're, uh, they're not to every location, though. I know that. Um, I know most of them use lanterns and, you know, they'll self contain power sources, but there is power hookups in some of the spa spaces. Okay, but we also can bring like a small generator or something of that nature. I, I don't think you're allowed generators. You know, I think oh, you're allowed to bring like the, you know, the lanterns. You can accommodate the board with Please? the site. You can accommodate the board <laughs> with a site. It's not my festival. <laughs> we'll, we'll work out the, uh, we'll work out something with lighting. Okay. Um, well, I appreciate everybody's uh, involvement in this. I think it'll be a good way for our, our city to uh, see what the Natural Resource Board does, and hopefully we'll continue that in the future. Just to clarify, uh, who was doing the Saturday from six to nine? Just um, six to nine. I've got Bob, and I'm sorry, that's on <coughs> Friday. I've got yes. I don't have a six to nine on Saturday. Um, I'm sorry. Is anybody available six to oh, nine on Saturday? Six to nine. Jim, mm -hmm. I, I said I've got you two to six. Oh, 
no, I think, on Saturday. Okay. Well, no. Um, it's creepy at the end. You had Jim on 2 to 6 on Friday. I think well, Mr. Ware good is 2 to 6 on, on Friday as Saturday. well as 2 to 6 on Saturday. I'm sorry. What well, I, I think two Mr. Ware good is 2 to six, 6 on Saturday. 2 to 6. You wanted me what 2 to 6? Right. Yeah. Mr. Chair, Jack also said in his email he would be available to work some of that too. He's on Great. vacation today. Jack, so. Okay, so if he could, we can maybe pencil him in and commute. I'll just put him. Jack will be um, 6 to 9 on Saturday. Okay. Um, okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm just writing this down. Hold on. All right. Very good. Uh, at this time, do we have any public input? Question for our public. I have a question for a member of the public. Uh, Michelle, who could, wh where do the applications for the board, where do they go? To whom? Or can you take an application? I, I could help answer that. It goes to the clerk's office and the clerk. The then city gives clerk? Us, okay. Then the clerk gives it to the city council and the city council then approves uh, a commission member. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have any? Uh, do we have any space open? I think the only thing we have open right now is an alternate position. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so we have one alternate or two alternate positions. I, I believe you have one alternate right now. I think one alternate. Okay. I do see we have a couple of members of our community in our audience tonight. Um, that's nice to see. Um, again, since we do have an alternate position open, I encourage anybody who would like to or has interest in it, um, please fill out the application and uh, give it to the, our city clerk, and then they will get it on agenda with the city council. And um, they may ask you a couple of questions at the meeting, um, and then uh, make an approval. So I encourage anybody that wants to participate also um, by being approved and a part of, as even as an alternate, we can <laughs> supply, um, you can participate in like some of these other events. Uh, Chair, just just to highlight again, for, uh, for this commission, you have to be you have to be a resident of Sebastian for one year. For one year already. Okay, you have to be a resident established for one year. Thank you. Um, but also, like as an alternate, you can even uh, participate with the various events that we're participating in and performing. So we can use all the help we can get. So we appreciate those that input. At this time, would anybody? From the public like to say anything about anything that's been on the agenda so far or anything else that concerns our the uh, natural resources and our environment of the city of sebastian oh there being none any new business that we'd like to discuss Island adoption. i'd like to mr chair uh Having, being an adoptee to the islands here in Sebastian, I'd like to be able to maybe relinquish. I may relinquish one of the islands, and I would like to know if the board is, would like to accept and take it a vote if they'd like to be an adopter again with the uh, Indian River Lagoon Aquatic Preserve. Um, and take a vote on that. I, I think what we can do, like. that's a great suggestion. Um, I'd like to put that on next month's agenda. Okay, so for further discussion, if we can add that to next month's agenda about adoption of an island that is within the city parameters. Yes, it is. We go great. So that would really be for the items for the next agenda. Any other issues? There being none. Staff mem matters. None tonight. None tonight. Thank you. Any member matters? We'll start down yep. at the end. Uh, just a small correction uh, about the, there is a, the, the addresses of the members have been circulated here. <clears throat> the small correction about my email. About your email? Yeah. It should read as R-A-T-A, -A, not two T's. Okay. Um, I tell you what, if Michelle has a moment after the meeting, if you can get with her. 
and make that correction, yep. that would be great. Thank you. Jim, do you have anything? Yep, no, Bob? I, I just wanna thank Frank and Michelle for their continuing help with the Oyster Mat project. Uh, I know it's been a long process and I, I really appreciate, uh, especially their cross sections and the maps and things they produced recently. So right. appreciate their support. Excellent. Gil? Uh, nothing to say to that. Uh, okay, Ms. Andrea? Nothing. Okay, Rose? I'd like to say thank, thank you to you for the job you're doing. I think it's fantastic. Well, I appreciate it. But um, last year I kind of got discouraged because we had offered to do something and it never went anywhere. And this year everybody is getting active and being part of the group and Great. it's nice. Well, I would like to say a few things. I know I made some notes down here earlier. Um, first of all, I would like to thank every, each member of the committee, um, our new alternate, um, whoever may be our alternate in the future, but also each of the active members here on the committee for taking part and taking responsibility for various sections. Uh, Bobby did a great job with getting the uh, REIs done and the communication. Um, Jim, I appreciate everything with the Giant Chi program. Gil, with your interest in like the Earth Day events. Andrea Rose, also with the Earth Day events. And Jack with our banner and sign. And um, I also want to thank especially um, Mr. Watanabe and Michelle and Barbara for all the work that they put in, in addition to their normal city duties that they have to do, and I, which I'm sure keeps them busy. I talk with staff different times during the month and I kind of picture an octopus because they have their hands in so many different areas and it definitely keeps them busy, but I appreciate their support uh, for our committee. Um, that concludes member matters. Any items for the next agenda we have about the adoption of the island? Guest speaker. Um, guest speakers, do you think we'll have anybody regarding the oyster mats or anything? I, I think if uh, Gil could get uh, Matthew from the Aquata Preserve, since his name has gone through the agencies already, I, I think it'd be uh, appropriate to have him come and do, give a, uh, right. information on the bags. Okay, we can, if you can set that up, right. Gil. His name is Matthew Anderson. Okay. Okay, that'd be great. Um, I'd like to add that we, um, for Earth Day, we decide whether we're gonna get a DJ or not, because we still need six months probably to um, book them if we're gonna get okay. a DJ. All right. Um, as part of that discussion, some information I'd like to be brought forward if we do decide on DJ, I'd like to know what expenses would be associated with that. Um, and if um, we have an idea of what funds that we would have available um, for any expenses of that nature for Earth Day. Chair, uh, you could, maybe I'll, for the next meeting too, I'll give you an update on the current budget since we now have an approved 2015-2016 uh, city budget. I'll find out where we sit with your current rollover funds so then okay. you'll know exactly what you have and then minus out you know items that we had to purchase you know banners and stuff and see right. where you sit okay fantastic mr chair if you'd like if you don't mind uh since i may be looking for a musician right i can also look into the dj thing i know quite a few people that do that type of thing well like i said we can bring some proposals to the next meeting okay thank you Anything else? No? No? There being none, this meeting is adjourned.